We are traveling a long time ago to a galaxy not very far away to take a look at Emperor Trump's 10 most unkind deeds from his third year as president. Just when you thought the roller coaster of unkind deeds from Trump's presidency couldn't get any wilder, year three kicks in with more twists, turns, and jaw dropping moments. 2019 was a whole new level of chaos. President, do you take any responsibility for the fact that you're about to be impeached? No, I don't take any. Uh, zero, uh, to put it mildly. From policy missteps to social media meltdowns, it's a mix of the shocking and absurd. Trump's third year continued to divide and disrupt and left an indelible mark still felt today. Was that R2? And buckle up, because if the first two years were the roller coaster, this one's gonna be the loop de loop, with each unkind deed being more unbelievable than the last. May the force be with us. Hey, don't, <laughs> don't meddle in the Insulting Greta Thunbai. After climate activist Greta Thunbai won Time Magazine's Person of the Year, Trump mocked and harassed her on Twitter telling her to chill and that she needs to work on her anger management issues. You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. You beat me out on Time Magazine. His comments were widely regarded as bullying. Hey, mocking Greta is like haunting Yoda. <laughs> Unwise and misguided. This attack on a young activist highlights Trump's disdain for environmental concerns and for young voices. The dismissal of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. Nielsen, who oversaw the family separation policy at the border, was forced to resign. Her resignation marked the beginnings of even harsher immigration policies under Trump. Trump firing Nielsen was like Vader firing another incompetent admiral. It's only gonna get worse for the rest of us. Her replacement, Kevin McAllian, continued to enforce strong immigration measures, further intensifying the humanitarian crisis at the border, and drawing strict human rights organizations' criticisms. Get out! Sorry, get out! Sorry, can't handle it. The trade war with China. President Trump is roiling financial markets today around the world, escalating his trade war with China. The trade war with China continued as Trump imposed tariffs that affected American farmers and consumers. Rich men and women you're talking about, the blue collar Americans, they're the ones that are most hurt by a lot of these tariffs. People in the Midwest, in places like Indiana and Missouri and I'm Wisconsin. I'm concerned about too, there might be some short term pain. I agree with that. This is number one, but this is the first of many. The uncertainty of these conditions caused a ripple effect that could be felt throughout global markets. <laughs> Trump's trade war was like trying to take down the Death Star with a slingshot. <laughs> not a good idea, and it's not going to work. <laughs> we'll That's a strategy happens. that most economists across the political spectrum don't think will well, work. Think American farmers face severe financial strain, with a record increase in the number of farm bankruptcies. And American consumers bore the brunt of the increase in prices of everyday goods caused by these tariffs, putting further strain on the household budgets of American consumers. We can't continue to allow China to rape our country, and that's what they're doing. Comments on Hurricane Dorian and Alabama. If it hits there, <laughs> Trump claimed incorrectly that Hurricane Dorian was gonna hit Alabama, and then doubled down on that lie with a Sharpie to falsely mark a map showing the path of the hurricane. The incident was dubbed Sharpie Gate and became a symbol of misinformation. So I wonder if altering the weather map was like Trump trying to do a Jedi mind trick. These are not the droids you're looking for. This is not the path of the hurricane. <laughs> The denial of asylum to Central American immigrants. Under this plan, the illegal aliens will no longer get a free pass into our country by lodging meritless claims in seeking asylum. Trump's administration implemented policies to deny asylum to migrants who did not seek protections in other countries first. 
a move widely criticized as being inhumane and legally dubious. It's like refusing to help a drowning person if they didn't ask the lifeguard first. <laughs> These policies left thousands of migrants in vulnerable situations, often in countries where they face significant threats of violence and persecution. If they see any weakness, they will come by the millions. Withdraw from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. We're the ones that have stayed in the agreement, and we've honored the agreement, but Russia has not, unfortunately, honored the agreement. So we're going to terminate the agreement. We're going to pull out. Trump withdrew the U.S. from the INF agreement with Russia, raising concerns and fears over a new arms race and undermining decades of arms control efforts. Russia has not adhered to the agreement. They should have been done years ago. It's like the Empire deciding to build a new Death Star. It's just going to end badly. The withdrawal prompted concerns from NATO allies, global leaders, and arms control experts who warned that it could increase global instability and promote a new arms race. Until people come to their senses, we have more money than anybody else by far. We'll build it up. The handling of the Mueller report. <laughs> you knew this was going to be on the list. Trump and his administration repeatedly misrepresented the findings in the Mueller report on the Russian interference in the 2016 election. The president had a corrupt intent to obstruct the investigation. This caused widespread mistrust and confusion. <laughs> It was like the Emperor saying, Everything is proceeding as I'd force. When it clearly wasn't. <laughs> I'm having a good day too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. I'm happy. There never was, by the way, and there never will be. Before we get to the top three, I've enlisted the help the greatest first mate in the entire galaxy, Chewbacca, and the Millennium Falcon to help take a look at the honorable mentions that didn't quite make the top 10 list of Trump's unkind deeds in his third year as president. The firing of John Bolton, Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, was dismissed missed policy clashes, signaling instability in Trump's administration. It's like changing chefs every meal. No wonder the kitchen is a mess. <laughs> the go back tweets to four congresswomen of African American descent. Trump's tweets telling four congresswomen of color go back to their countries of origin sparked renewed criticisms of racism. Ignoring the Hong Kong protests, Trump's lack of support for pro-democracy demonstrators in China drew heavy criticism, as many speculated that he was prioritizing trade negotiations with China over human rights. Would not be the first time. <laughs> ignoring the protests, it's like the empire ignoring the rebel uprisings. <laughs> To round out the top three most unkind deeds by Trump in his third year as president, we're going to have to travel deep into the heart of the empire. <laughs> Chewy, prepare to make the jump to light speed. Number three, Trump's comments on the Charlottesville rally anniversary. This egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. It's on many sides. On the anniversary of the violent Charlottesville rally, Trump continued to equivocate on whether to condemn white supremacists, causing further outrage and dismay. It's like Vader saying there are good people on both sides after blowing up Alderaan. <laughs> His reluctance to unequivocally denounce white supremacists further fueled racial tensions within the U.S. 
and it was widely seen as an abdication of moral leadership. I think there were very fine people on both sides in some. Oh, I've answered that question, and if you look at what I said, you will see that that question was answered perfectly. And I was talking about people that went because they felt very strongly about the monument to Robert E. Lee, a great general, whether you like it or not. Number two, the refusal to release his tax returns. So with everything else going on, I can't believe that this made number two. Yes or no, do you believe voters have a right to see your tax returns before they make a final decision? I don't think they do, but I, I do say this. Uh, I will really gladly give them. They're not going to learn anything, but it's under routine audit. When the audit ends, I'm going to present them. That should be before the election. I hope it's before the election. Despite ongoing calls for transparency, despite promising transparency, Trump refuses to release his tax return. As you know, Mr. Trump, the, the audit is, is no excuse. The IRS has made it very clear that an audit is not a bar to public release. It is entirely your choice. President Nixon, Richard Nixon, released his tax returns even though he was under audit. And when you were seeking a casino license in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, you released the returns to the state officials even though you were under audit. Fueling speculation about his financial dealings, finances, and conflicts of interest. If you were willing to release your tax returns to get a casino license, why shouldn't voters see them before they make you commander in chief? Well, because at the time, it didn't make any difference to me. Now it does. If it's like the Emperor trying to hide the plans for the Death Star. <laughs> it's obvious he's got something to hide. <laughs> Pay as little tax as possible, and I've, I've said that for the last two years. I fight very hard because this country wastes our money. They take our tax money and they throw it down the drain. They spend $4 trillion in the Middle East, and we can't fix a road or a bridge. Legal battles ensued over access to Trump's financial records, pleading the speculation over conflicts of interest and the integrity of his business dealings. I fight very hard. I consider it an expense because, frankly, our country doesn't know what they're doing with our money or our tax money, and that's part of the problem. So I fight very hard to pay as little tax as possible. You oppose me, yet you are still here. What do you hope to achieve? Cruel power doesn't come from cruelty. It comes from others lifting people up, not breaking them. Strength comes from dominance. I've seen leaders use cruelty to divide and to destroy. I refuse to believe that that is the only way to lead. The Ukraine scandal and impeachment inquiry. There was no pressure. It turned out to be a nothing call other than a lot of people said, I never knew you could be so nice. The revelation that Trump pressured Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and his son fled to Trump's impeachment by the House of Representatives. And it highlighted Trump's abuse of power and his willingness to undermine political rivals at any cost. Just so you understand, it's the single greatest witch hunt in American history, probably in history, but in American history, it's a disgraceful thing. Pressure from President Trump to investigate Joe, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. That nobody pushed it. Pushed me. Yes. In other words, no pressure. His scandal was like Vader trying to bribe Luke to join the dark side. He was blatantly corrupt and desperate. The impeachment inquiry exposed Trump's efforts to leverage foreign assistance for his own personal political gain, and it led to a historic and contentious Senate trial. No push, no pressure, no nothing. It's all a hoax, folks. It's all a big hoax. If you enjoyed this episode of Trump's 10 Most Unkind Deeds in his third year, Hit the subscribe button and tune in for episode four. It's worthy of a trilogy in and of itself. In the meantime, may the force be with us all.